All right, so for this video, I'm going to show you how to load a, an STL file, so a model file for a 3D printer, and how to run it through the slicer. And what the slicer does is it communicates to the 3D, 3D printer each layer that it needs to print. And uh, depending on the size of the model, that could be, say, 500 layers, and it could be thousands of layers. And so you have to run it through a slicer in order for the 3D printer to know how to properly print your model. And so what we did is we first opened up the Creality software slicer. And that uh, is not, it's not an ideal slicer, but it does work very well with the Creality printer. So we want to use something that's going to be accessible and easy to use with your 3D printers. And so to import the model, first we're going to click on file, and we're going to click on load model file. And when we do that, we're going to find our file that we have, and I'm going to use a calibration cube. And if this is your first time printing, always start with a calibration cube so that you can see how your printer is operating and whether or not it's operating properly and to the right dimensions that it should be. And you'll notice that it'll list here that this is an STL file. I'm going to hit open. And there you can see the calibration cube appears right in the center of, of our 3D printer bed. Now, if we look on the left hand side, let me highlight a few settings that you may need to change depending on what you want to print. So first of all is layer height. Typically your layer height is going to be um, 0.2. Uh, you can go as low as 0 0.01. That's a really, really fine layer height. Um, but if you want a quality print that also spares you the time that you need, 0 0.2 is a great way to start. Your thickness, you want to keep that the same. Um, and then also you want to enable retraction. And what that means is that the retraction process is the process of holding back on and pulling back on the um, filament as it's going through the extruder when it doesn't need to extrude. Now, the fill density is an area that you want to pay attention to. That can vary. If you want it to be completely solid, you're going to say 100%. But if you were to print 100% of uh, an object, it would take a significant amount of time and you might not need it to be 100% to still maintain the integrity of the overall object. Um, a lot of times I use between 20 and 30% density and that's it. Um, but pay attention to the model and what your needs are. Um, sometimes I use 10% if I want it to look like a vase, for example, it's very, very small. So. Um, you may need to change that depending on what your fill needs to be. Now with print speed, this is an area that you'll play around with. Um, 60 to 90 is a really good speed. I go really slow if I want it to be a quality print and if I want it to look properly. Um, so I did 35 whenever I, I did the violins, for example. It took two days for the violins to print, but by going slow, it gave the extruder time to um, extrude the material onto the bed and it ended up looking really nice. So if you really want it to look nice, make sure you take the time and allow that print speed to be slow. Your temperature will be marked on your filament that you choose. Typically our filaments are between 190 and 215 degrees. Um, if you go up into uh, the ABS and if you go into um, the other filaments, you can get pretty high as far as temperature, but 215 is a good spot, but definitely look at the filament that you chose to see what the temperature should be. And a bed temperature is typically 60 degrees. Um, and then lastly, you have some options on whether or not you need supports. So that's if you have an overhanged object. So if it's overhanging and you wanna put some supports that'll, that will get chopped off at the end of the print, you can add supports in there. Um, and then also your platform adhesion, adhesion type, you have a brim or a raft. A brim puts a mark right around the object. A raft puts the object actually on essentially a flat raft. I do suggest um, using either a brim or a raft whenever you do it. Uh, it just allows the printer to get calibrated and get started before actually getting onto your actual model. And then finally, your filament diameter, um, anything that you do with me, it'll be 1.75. That's your, your typical and 100% flow. And our no nozzle side is, is always going to be 0.4. And so here we have our object, um, our XYZ calibration cube that you can see. 
you can mirror it, you can scale it up if you want to make it bigger. Um, you can rotate your object using these uh, three buttons. And then whenever you're ready to just transfer it to the 3D printer and to get started with printing, just click on this save toolpath. Uh, it'll also give you an estimate as to how long it'll take. So I'm going to save that toolpath and um, I'm going to put, you know, ready and save it. And that'll end up being a G code. It'll tell me where it's located. And I'm either going to print directly from the computer that I'm on um, or take it, put it on an SD card and take it to the actual 3D printer and you're ready to rock and roll.